good. So here we go on the R6. What's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Bike. And I am so excited to be making this video because finally I get to show you guys this bike that's been sitting in my garage for the past couple months. My new track bike, 2016 R6, and obviously it's got a lot of parts thrown at it. Uh, this is pretty much how I bought it. I haven't done much to it. I've got some plans for it over the winter, but this thing is freaking wicked. I love it. And today we're gonna get it out on the track, show you what it's all about take a ride on a proper track bike basically. So I've got the tires warming up right now. We'll get it on the track, walk through everything that's been done to this bike because there's some cool stuff on it. Let's jump right in. All right, so here we go on the R6. Gonna just get it warming up here. Still a little bit low on temp. It's a cold day out today. Tires are nice and warm, ready to go. Taking a peek here at my pad life. I am really close to the end of these pads, so we're not going to ride all that much today. Even though I'm low on brake pad life, we're still going to give it a couple easy laps, won't go too hard on the brakes, and we'll talk about what the bike is like to ride. This is pretty much a second gear only track. You can, uh, Take this bike up into third gear on the back straight if you want, but you can also just ring it out and leave it in second the whole time. Like I said, I'm going kind of easy on the brakes today because I don't have much pad life left, but I really just wanted to give you an idea of the sounds, the feeling of this this bike so yeah like I said makes a hundred and seventeen horsepower a little bit too much power for this track honestly this is a little tiny go-kart track but it makes for really good practice uh, if you can get around this track on a 600 which is a heavy bike for this track quickly then Alright, so let's talk about suspension and brakes on this bike. Um, so, suspension uh, has been done by Motorev. Um, they are uh, professional suspension tuners, so fully adjustable front forks and really, really solid suspension. Uh, for brakes, stock calipers with uh, steel braided lines. I've got some nice uh, sintered road racing pads in the front there that don't last all too long. Up top, Brembo master cylinder right there. So nice pull on that. And then you can see this tube coming out here. There's a little adjuster for the distance on the brake lever. So you can use your left hand. And if you look here at the brake lever while I spin that, it'll actually adjust the distance so you can kind of dial in uh, and adjust the brake lever pull for certain parts of the track and you can do that every lap. So pretty cool setup there. The rear sets I have, these are Vortex rear sets and uh, they're fully adjustable. You can see all the holes here so you can completely dial in where your feet are sitting and that's definitely a super nice item. And then for rear suspension, I've got this super nice Olin's TTX gas charged rear shock, fully adjustable. Um, this is pretty much the nicest Olin shock you can get. So it's fair to say that suspension on this bike is fully dialed. The guy I bought it from was pretty much my exact uh, body weight. He had it professionally tuned right before I bought it. I made a couple tweaks to the suspension, but it was pretty perfect when I first got it. So I've been leaving it like that for now. Got a couple more Vortex parts. So here's that other rear set right here. I've also got this Vortex uh, chain guard right there. And then uh, moving up to the top of the bike, Vortex um, quick fill gas tank. If you're wondering what this is, it's a little vent hose. Vortex clutch lever, uh, Renthal clip-ons right there. 
And uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for the controls on the bike. Now I do have a TransLogic quick shifter. It is wired into the bike and it supports clutchless upshifting and downshifting, which is awesome. So when I'm on the track, pretty much the only time I'm using the clutch on this bike is to pull out of pit lane. Once I'm on the track, Pretty much never am touching the clutch, just, uh, that's a little loose, I gotta fix that. But uh, pretty much am just uh, using my feet to shift, no clutch needed, which is pretty nice. And as always, we're here at IMI Motorsports Complex. Check them out using the link down in the description below. So you can come out and use the asphalt track, rent some go-karts, take your uh, dirt bike or side-by-side -side up to the motocross track. They even have a flat track. There's tons to do here, check them out. I do have these tank protectors on right here, so if I were to go down, this would hopefully keep the tank in one piece. I would need all new body work, but tanks are expensive, so hopefully this will protect my tank. Got a little bit of a grip pad here to hug my legs onto. Uh, up here, you can see the adjustable Olin's front suspension that I was talking about earlier. Olin steering stabilizer as well, right there. Um, yeah, let's let's fire the bike up because um, it's kind of weird. So I've got three different kill switches on here. This first one is bike power. That'll actually that's like turning the key on. Then I've got an always on fan, so that turns the fan on. That's the actual on off run for the motor, and then of course the starter running. And this bike has a really cool warm-up feature. So I just come here, hold this button for five seconds, let go and push again. And now it's automatically auto-blipping for me. So just let this run for a couple minutes, it'll warm up all by itself, and then I'm ready to go out. Now the reason you need that is because this motor is not stock. This is not a stock R6 by any means. And I don't know everything that's been done to it. The guy who sold it to me didn't even know himself. He had some shops work on it uh, and he had a ton of bikes. So he knew that it was powerful and uh, had a lot of parts in it, but he didn't know exactly everything that was done. I know there's a new head, it's been cammed, uh, it's been tuned, flashed. It has, you know, aftermarket wiring harness, uh, ECU, all that kind of stuff. But beyond that, I don't know every single thing that's been done to this bike, but it definitely makes a lot more power than a stock R6. It was dynoed recently, 117 horsepower to the wheel here at altitude in Colorado. So pretty damn uh, powerful for an R6. So you really wanna get that oil circulating to the top of the motor. And uh, when the, the motor's really cold, especially on a cold day like today, it really helps to have that auto blipping function to just circulate some oil. Now this has a Graves exhaust on it. Baffle has been removed and I think it sounds pretty good. It's hard to go wrong with a 600cc inline four on the track. It just sounds in its element. Also, because this is a race prep bike, pretty much everything that can come off of the bike has been safety wired. So rear axle, brake caliper bolts, banjo bolts, um, oil filler cap is drilled out to uh, be safety wired. I just did an oil change recently and didn't re-safety wire it because I don't need to go through tech inspection anytime soon. But there's tons of safety wire all over this bike. Like I said, anything that could come off while you're rolling down the track is safety wired. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much what you need to do if you want to uh, get serious into track days. Beyond that, that's pretty much everything that's been done to it. There's some other things here and there, um, like you know, axle sliders, stuff like that. I'm sure I'm missing a couple things. Um, but yeah, also it came with three sets of wheels, which is pretty cool. I don't have them all here with me, but I do have a set of forged wheels back at home, uh, ceramic bearings, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, like I said, plans are to probably do a new livery on it, do a front fork rebuild over the winter, and then beyond that, just ride the hell out of it. So there's that quick shifter I was talking about. Didn't use the clutch at all there. And I'm just able to rock through the gears uh, with no clutch. A little bit of a bad apex there. That's all right. This compared to my old RC390, this feels a lot more badass. Feels like you're on a proper race machine. The RC390 was great for learning on, but this is a whole different monster. The other thing you gotta keep in mind, this has no traction control, no ABS. My KTM didn't have any of that either, but on this, mistakes can be made. 
much more quickly and uh, they can turn pretty disastrous. But all in all, I've had a lot of fun with this bike. I'm sad that winter is starting because I want to be riding this as much as I can. So yeah, super happy with my purchase. Let me know down in the comments below. If you have any questions about this bike, if there's anything you'd like to see with this bike, or even if you want me to share my process over the winter of making some changes to it. So there you go, just a quick look at my 2016 Yamaha R6 track bike. Wanted to get this done before I tuck it away for the winter and really stop riding it until next season. Uh, if you don't know, I came from a KTM RC390, so the switch from that to this bike has been pretty crazy going from 44 to 117 horsepower, but I've been in love with it. Don't regret the decision at all and uh, I think this bike is here to stay for a long time. Uh, it's a little too much power for a track like this. It's good practice though, uh, but over at a track like High Plains or even like Utah Motorsports Campus, any of those much bigger tracks, this is just super, super fun. And I don't see myself really ever going back to an RC390. As much fun as it was, uh, I learned a lot on that bike, but the sounds this makes, the feeling you get on this, just makes your blood pump and makes your adrenaline rush and I love that feeling. So safe to say I'm in love with this bike. You'll be seeing more of it. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.